Hello everyone, today we're going to check out a new diffusion model called SANA. Last month, I talked about AI image generation models that weren't releasing their model weights on Hugging Face at the time. Back then, all they had was the model page introduction and a demo page where we could try out their diffusion model in a prototype environment. Now fast forward to today, we have the SANA Diffusion model released on GitHub and Hugging Face, complete with their model weights. SANA is an image generation model developed by NVIDIA Labs. And of course, NVIDIA, being the GPU maker we all know, is creating AI models, especially diffusion models for image generation, that are highly optimized for GPU memory usage and overall efficiency. So in this video, we're going to check how efficient this model is in terms of VRM usage and performance. Uh, What's really impressive is that, based on the benchmarks and testing metrics, their diffusion model requires significantly less computational power. This makes the cost of generating images much lower. Plus, the generation time is incredibly fast compared to other state-of-the-art image generation models like Flux, Stable Diffusion 3, and PixArt. SANA's memory usage is almost a fraction of what Flux needs. It's crazy to think you can render a 4K resolution image with such minimal computing power. Now, here's the latest update. Just yesterday, they released the ComfyUI nodes, and today we've got the BF16 SANA model, which is more stable and fine-tuned to run on your PC or GPU server environment. Clicking on the ComfyUI nodes link takes you to a page called ComfyUI Extra Models. The creator of these nodes is CT96, who's well known for creating GGUF quantization models. They've built these extra comfy UI custom nodes, allowing us to integrate various AI diffusion models, including Flux, Stable Diffusion, JAMA, 2 billion parameters, and now SANA. There's also PixArt, which was previously released using the T5 text clip encoder and the Hanyun DIT model. Just to clarify, Hanyun is an image generation model, so now there's a lot to explore and experiment with, thanks to these custom nodes. To get started, open ComfyUI and go to the ComfyUI Manager, search for Extra Models, and look for the ComfyUI Extra Models option in the search results. Click Install and it will automatically download and install all the necessary files for you. Then, just restart ComfyUI and you're good to go. Once you restart, open the Command Prompt window to verify the installation. If there are no import errors, you're all set. Now let's move on. In the default text-to-image workflow, we don't need to modify much. Just type SANA in the search box and you'll see a few custom nodes appear. SANA text encode, SANA resolution condition, SANA checkpoint loader, SANA resolution select, and empty SANA latent image. These five custom nodes make it super easy to create a simple text-to-image or image-to-image -image workflow. There's no need to download a ton of custom node packages to run the SANA latent diffusion model. Next, let's check out the example workflows on GitHub. The checkpoint loader will download the SANA diffusion model files into your checkpoint folder. For this diffusion model, the VAE, Variational Autoencoder, is specifically designed for SANA, just like Stable Diffusion has its SDXL VAE and Flux has its own VAE loader. What's unique here is the text encoder. Instead of using the T5XXL encoder, SANA uses the JAMA encoder with 2 billion parameters. This large language model enhances your text prompts, making them more understandable to the diffusion model. It's like a built-in prompt enhancement tool. What's even cooler is that this 2 billion parameter model is lightweight enough to run on a CPU. There's even a setting for using it on your CPU if needed. Of course, I'll also test it on my GPU since I've got enough VRAM for that. For sampling steps, it uses the K-sampler, pretty much the same approach as in Stable Diffusion or Flux. The final VAE decode step saves the image just as you'd expect. So, heading back to ComfyUI, we'll start building our workflow, but first we need to download the model files. Let's get started. So, in the extra models ComfyUI custom nodes, scroll down to the SANA section. There, you'll see some model files that you'll need to download. First of all, you'll need to download the SANA model weights from the Hugging Face repository. Clicking the link will redirect you to the SANA model weights page. Just click the download button, or if you prefer, you can programmatically download the files. Either way, Make sure to save them in your ComfyUI Models folder, specifically in the Checkpoint folder. Next, we'll download the VAE files. 
the text encoder will be downloaded automatically the first time you run it in ComfyUI. The backend uses hugging face libraries to fetch the model weights. However, the VAE and Diffusion model files are a single file, so it's easier to download them manually. Here's the VAE file for the SANA Diffusion model. One thing to note, the file name is often something generic, like diffusion underscore pytorch underscore model or something equally unhelpful. So I recommend renaming it. I'll use the title VA models for clarity and place it in the ComfyUI models folder. Under the models folder, go to the VAE subfolder and move the file there. Once that's done, head back to ComfyUI and we'll start building the workflow. Now, type SANA and drag all the relevant nodes into the workflow area. This is where we can start experimenting with everything. First, we need the checkpoint loader. As we saw in the GitHub repository demo, the text-to-image workflow is very straightforward and simple. We'll begin by selecting the SANA model. To do this, type the name in the filter box and the SANA model will appear. Select it and you're good to go. For the model type, make sure to choose the correct one. Here, we're using the 1600M model, which is the one we downloaded. Then, connect the model to the K sampler. This forms the basic structure of a Comfy UI workflow. After that, we add the text encoder and the SANA resolution conditions. Finally, we'll also include the SANA resolution select. This setup includes different resolutions for specific image models. In this case, I'll select the same type using the 1600 million parameters. We're going to connect the width and height to the resolution conditions. For the SANA empty late in image, we'll also use the same width and height. This way, we'll have centralized control over all the width and height settings. Then, we'll connect the latent image to the case sampler. We've also got the text encoder here. For this, there's a specific loader for Gemma. Drag that line over to the workflow area, and we've got the Gemma loader connected. Now, there seems to be another Gemma loader option available, and I'm not sure why both appear for the models. However, the Hugging Face and GitHub project pages mention that using the 4-bit version is sufficient for running on a CPU. This allows us to significantly reduce VRAM usage during generation. The Gemma 2 billion parameter large language model will automatically download the first time you run these custom nodes. So, you don't need to manually download everything from Hugging Face. From here, we can continue connecting all the nodes. We'll also add a negative prompt. Drag another SANA text encoder node, which we'll use for the negative prompt. The green marker at the top represents the positive prompt, so it's all pretty straightforward. I just dragged the SANA resolution conditions node from the search box. I think using this node for the positive prompt will make things tidier and improve accuracy when generating images. We'll also use the empty latent node here, keeping the same width and height as before. Everything connects through the Resolution Select node. For resolutions, we can choose the aspect ratio we want for the image. In this case, I'll try a 1. 1 aspect ratio and see how it goes. After the K sampler generation step, the final step will be the VAE decode. Here we'll use the VAE loader. For the SANA model, we'll specifically use the extra VAE loader from the custom nodes in the Comfy UI extra models. Make sure to select the right VAE for SANA. We've already downloaded this from Hugging Face. And for the VAE type, we'll use SANA 1.0. You'll see something like DCA followed by a bunch of numbers, but we're sticking with SANA 1.0. For the data type, FP16 is good enough for this configuration. Lastly, we'll output the image to see the result. And that's it. This is the basic setup for the SANA text-to-image workflow. For text prompts, I'm using my embedded knowledge base from the open web UI. I have Llama 3.2 Vision installed locally, so I'll load an image into the Vision model to generate text prompts. For this demo, I'll use those generated prompts and see how it renders the image. The Gemma 2 billion model should have no problem understanding the context of these prompts. For negative prompts, as shown in their examples, we can define keywords like blurry, low quality, 3D cartoon, extra hands, extra fingers, etc. This is a standard procedure we often use. Unlike Flux models, which don't require negative prompts, SANA does. So we'll input those keywords into the negative prompt box. Once everything is set up, we'll click generate and see how it goes. And there it is. The gamma loader starts downloading the model weights 
For the large language model, you can see the progress bar as the files are fetched. And here we have the first image, so the workflow are working successfully. Let's testing more on this model. So here, I've got another text prompt, a man walking in the city skyline. This one's more of a landscape style image. Let's generate it and see how it turns out. The generation process for this diffusion model is pretty fast. We got two images side by side, two variations. The first one, not so great, but I really like the second one. It's got a nice structure, two sides of a building and a guy standing on top looking out over the urban city view. The coloration is a bit different compared to other diffusion models. When I set the CFG to 7 or even higher, you'll notice other styles coming through, like more saturated colors. At CFG 7, it's okay for anime or 3D style images, but if you're aiming for realism, higher CFG values don't work well. It all depends on the style and type of image you want to create. For this futuristic urban cityscape, the CFG settings are fine and it works well. Now let's try another text prompt. This time I've got one from Llama 3, a bunch of fruit on a table. With this text prompt and a CFG of 3, I got two variations of the generated image. The first one, too many artifacts, it just doesn't look great. The grapes, for instance, look plastic, but the second image is much better. The fruit positions are accurate and everything feels more natural. Now, let's bump it up to CFG 7. When you go higher with the CFG for realism style images, you start getting plastic-like textures. The apple looks like a plastic apple, and the grapes and bananas have this plasticky finish too. This is just how this diffusion model works. It behaves differently depending on the CFG settings. With a lower CFG, you get more natural lighting and textures, but with a higher CFG, you'll see these changes. It's fun to experiment with the variations though. Some results turn out great, while others not so much. Let's test another text prompt, a nature view of a landscape. Once again, I like the second image better. The colors and overall composition look fine. For this, I used just one sampler. I didn't do anything fancy like multiple case sampler steps or anything like that. I set it to 30 steps, which works well. I also tested it with two samplers by creating groups, passing the latent image to the second sampler. When you use multiple samplers with this diffusion model, the results tend to shift. In this case, the second sampling group started producing cartoonish or anime-style images, while the first group, with a different seed, looked more like oil paintings. Zooming into the second group, you can see the anime-style output isn't great with Sana. From my experience, this model doesn't work well with multiple sampling groups. Instead, I prefer using the Ultimate SD Upscaler. It lets you upscale the resolution while keeping the same color tones, style, and quality of the original image. You're basically enlarging the resolution, and it's a great way to make the most out of this model. These AI models can generate images in 4K, so it's totally fine to use upscalers to double or even quadruple the image size. There's no issue with doing that. For this, I use Linear Mode, which fits the linear diffusion transformer architecture. And as you can see, the upscaled image looks great. It's quite similar to the first generated sampler group. Here, as you can see, the SANA resolution select lets you choose different aspect ratios. For example, you can set it to four, which gives you a wide angle resolution. This creates a panoramic style image, like a wide view photo. Take this one as an example. The generated lake view has a really wide angle, almost like it was taken with a fisheye lens, but instead, it's entirely AI generated. Between the two variations, the first image looks better. We can even upscale this wide angle shot, experimenting with different resolutions. So here's the result of the upscaled group for this wide angle lake view. It looks amazing. The upscaling process itself doesn't take too long, about three seconds for each tile region using the ultimate SD upscaler. That adds up to around 20 seconds for the entire upscale process for the two images. I have to say, this diffusion model processes things pretty quickly, just as the research report promised. When you zoom into the upscaled image, everything looks very clear. There aren't many pixel deformations or weird artifacts going on. Although I did notice that the boat on the lake doesn't look entirely right. It's kind of a mix between a boat and a floating house, which is a little off. But 
that's something we could fix with in-painting if we really wanted to. The water waves on the lake look fantastic, though. Considering the diffusion model is relatively small, around 2 billion parameters, or practically 1.6 billion, it's impressive that it can generate something this good. A small model doing big things, right? Now, let's try another text prompt. This time, I'll disable the upscalers and focus just on the text prompt, a futuristic city view. For this one, I'm using ultra-wide resolutions, and again, both images look amazing. Each has its own unique characteristics, so it's hard to pick a favorite this time. One image shows flying ships in the sky, while the other has more futuristic-style buildings with some trace rays or lasers floating in the air. It's got that proper sci-fi vibe, something you'd expect in Flux. If we were generating ultra-wide resolution images with other models, it would typically take a lot of time. But with Sana, it handles 4K or other large dimension images effortlessly, generating them in just a few seconds. As you can see, while I'm clicking, the model spends only a few seconds to create such high-resolution images. This ultra-wide view captures everything beautifully in such a short time. I really like how this diffusion model supports a variety of scenes. It's capable of producing realism, hyper-realistic styles, 3D art, and more. Take this Apocalypse Collapse Cities view, for example. I prefer the first image here because it has a nice depth in the middle, with a road cutting through some glass or grass. The structure of the image is really well done. The second image looks good too, but there's an issue with the car in the scene. The back of the car is too long and doesn't look structurally correct, so we'll probably have to discard this one. For ultra-wide resolution images, I've got another idea. Let's generate something like an aquarium aquascaping plant tank. I'll use Llama 3 to create some prompts for this and see what we get. Here's what I got, a Japanese-style aquarium for aquascaping. I tried a few variations and they turned out pretty nice overall. However, there's an issue with the fish. The size of the fish doesn't match the aquarium. It's disproportionate compared to the stones and other elements. The fish should be much smaller. Plus, koi fish aren't typically used in aquascaping tanks. It's just common sense. Any aquarium hobbyist would understand what I mean. Let's tweak it a bit. Let's tweak this text prompt a bit. I'm going for an Amazon-inspired aquarium tank, swapping out the koi fish for a pistogramma fish. That will give it more of an aquascaping-style fish tank, something we're used to seeing. And yes, this looks very much like the layouts we see in competitions, like the IAPLC. If you're familiar with it, you know ADA-hosted aquascaping aquariums often have this kind of style. Right here you can see how the stones are shaped. This AI model can replicate those stone formations, arranging them in a U-shape with two sides and a central opening. I really like this image for my hobby. It's great for brainstorming ideas about different aquascaping layouts you can try. Honestly, I was pretty surprised when I tested this. Let's upscale the image and see what we get. Hmm, this one isn't great. Too many distortions, and the layout structure doesn't quite work. Let's try generating some variations and tweak the text prompt again. This time, I want to add wood and stone to create a harder, more structured aquascaping style. Let's see if that improves the aquarium layout. Oh, now this one is good. It looks amazing. This diffusion model is really something I think NVIDIA must have included aquarium and plant in the training data set because it handles different aquascaping moss, plants, and stone arrangements so well. Unlike amateur layouts, where stones are just stacked randomly, this looks more like the professional styles we see in IAPLC aquascaping competitions. Of course, I'd still need to fine-tune this if I were to apply it in my actual fish tank, but this is already inspiring, and it's incredible that this AI model can generate such detailed wide-angle shots with just one sampler and 30 sampling steps. The level of detail is stunning. Check it out. Sana is available for download, and you can use it with Comfy UI. The generation time is impressively fast for a transformer-based diffusion model. Even with its small parameter size, just under 2 billion, it can produce large, high-resolution, detailed images in no time. So yeah, that's it for now. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day. See ya.